everyone. Thanks for joining me. Let's talk family, parents, siblings, and a lifetime of drama that follows family. As I learned of the much loved Queen Elizabeth's death, I can't help but to think about her lifetime of service and love and wisdom with her every word that she cast upon us in all her speeches over the many years that she reigned as queen. There was something so soothing and absolutely calming about her words that always made me feel like we got this and all will be well. I just adored her and I can say that she was a real role model for me. As I sat to watch the news reports as it all unfolded and, you know, watching the who's who and who was wearing what and who was standing next to who and who snubbed who and who's attending and who was not. And it's so, you know, it's kind of so all obnoxious, but here was this beautiful woman who served our world with her loving and peaceful messages. And she was a mom and a granny. And I still remember her being so heartbroken as uh, her beloved husband had died last year when she had to sit at the funeral service by herself because it was on the heels of COVID. And so my heart broke for her. So the Royals, you know, they're all, you know, they do too misbehave. And, you know, you've got like the king and Camilla, who had their long, long lasting affair, even with Diana, you know, um, that really, you know, that really was a very upsetting time for the royals. I mean, it was blatant. And then obviously now we've got Camilla, the consort queen, which the queen was so graciously to accept, which I thought. And then you have Prince Andrew intertwined with Jeffrey Epstein. And, you know, he had to settle the undisclosed amount of money for his victim. So I got to thinking that even in the Windsors, they can't get all their foils to behave. You know, never mind behaving royally in public, but just to behave with respect for their family. Yes, I understand it's a really hard role and we could never imagine, you know, being in it. But when they're in the public eye and they know that they're scrupulously being watched for any little mishap or squabble, you know, you've got to watch out. That's that was what you were born into. Okay, so let's talk about Harry. He left because he wasn't valued as a royal. Okay, I get it. He was the last in line for everything. And, you know, he, he felt like he couldn't have a real status or a title. But he was a great guy. You know, he did a lot for his, his country. He served for his country. So he wanted to settle in with his wife, Megan, in America. But that was after she was given the fairy tale wedding of her dreams and that the queen gave them a title that made her famous. Remember, she was a Hollywood celebrity. She wasn't that famous. But she wasn't anything until she met Harry. In my opinion, Harry brought Megan up in status and certainly not the other way around. So I'm going to jump over to my family now. My motto is, you don't like living in my house, then you move out and take all your memories with you. I love you, but I don't think it's, don't think it's a revolving door around here. And I love very hard, but I also love very strong. And absolutely everyone in my family knows I don't tolerate any BS. I don't have kids of my own. I have stepchildren and I have known them since one and three years old. They're grownups. And I also have four grandchildren now. So after all these years, I see the dynamics and the behaviors of what traits were passed down from me and my husband and from their mom and their and her husband. Like Queen Elizabeth, who was not born to be queen and became pr- crowned as the Queen of England only when 
her uncle stepped down as king. And then Elizabeth's father, George, became king. So when George died, Elizabeth became queen at a very young age. I believe the universe worked that just the way it was meant to be. Okay, so now I will jump over to my family again. I have a brother who's 12 years older than me. I was born in 1963. My parents were older then, and I was told I was a mistake, unexpected. I was also told that a few years before, my mother aborted a child. It was unwanted. I don't know, maybe. Or she emotionally couldn't handle another kid. Maybe. I just don't know. But I will tell you, my mother was very emotionally scarred for having that abortion. It haunted her for her entire life. I think I was that soul she aborted. I was either ordered to or chose to come back because I know I had a job to do. I knew from a very young age that I was not born to, I was not born to be a biological mother. So we, the queen and I, and oh my God, I have always wanted to say me and the queen in the same sentence, share the same examples. We both were not supposed to be here in this life served or be what we're supposed to be in this life served. But instead, we have the energy strands within our family that connected us forever. Yes, I did say forever. Now, let me explain a little bit. Energy strands or cords are emotional strands of energy that form regardless of time and space. It's pertinent within our circles of our close friends and families and and family members. We are all connected by energy strands one way or another. Now, there's a fabulous book to read about this. And it's called Energy Strands, The Ultimate Guide to Clearing the Cords That Are Constricting Your Life by Dennis Lynn. And it's spelled L-I-N-N. We also have connections to how the universe puts our families together. The universe labels it a birth order. So, okay, aha, I decided to dig a little deeper and find out more. So posted in Psychology Today, birth order refers to the order of a child born in their family, firstborn, secondborn, et cetera. Birth order is often believed to have a profound and lasting effect on psychological development. The assertion has been repeated, repeatedly challenged. Recent research has consistently found that earlier born children score slightly higher on average on measures of intelligence, but has found zero or almost zero robust effect of birth order on personality. Nevertheless, the notion that birth order significantly influences personality continues to have a strong presence in pop psychology and pop culture. Today, I have my dear friend, Karen Roman, who is also a psychic medium and expert in revealing the telltale signs of personalities and why your siblings and family members act and do the things they do. So come join me. Oh my goodness. Thank you for being here, my buddy, my friends. Thank you for having me. My accountability partner. (laughs) My God. Thank God. People, people, let me just say, thank God I had Karen as my accountability partner because I was at a time in my life when schedules were like all over the place. I couldn't remember nothing. So she was like, reminding me day in and day out. Do you remember we have a meeting? We have to do this. We have to do that. So oh, I am so indebted to you. <laughs> no way, Jose. You are perfect. Yeah. So we are here today because I wanted to um, invite you on here because I, because of how fabulous you are. Hello. But also because of birth order, because you do this wonderful thing called birth order and you explain how 
all the family that we have been born into. And I complain about mine every day. (laughs) Um, How there's a reason for it and how the order goes. And so please just give us a little bit about you and tell us about birth order. Well, a little bit about me. I'm a dropout from corporate America in my 50s somethings. (laughs) (laughs) And I decided to explore a whole nother space for myself. And that sort of is what brought me here. I, um, I decided in 2019 to get certified as an iridologist, which is a whole nother story, but that's what led me into birth order. And uh, I ended up with an instructor and he had developed a new, really detailed way of doing birth order, aside from that one that we all know. I'm the middle child, that's the one you hear the most, middle child syndrome. And so that was done in the 60s, really, is when it started becoming popular. And we all started learning, oh, your middle child or the oldest child. And from there, it was really developed into these 12 positions. And as you know, from working with you, that you're strong in the one girl position, and so am I. And so I started really, I got my reading done as a one girl. And I thought this makes so much sense because it goes into personality and characteristics. It talks about when we're imbalanced and how to get back in balance. It talks about ideal careers, uh, how we communicate. It's really a fascinating thing. So for the first um, six positions, it's very detailed and laid out. And at the seventh girl position or boy position, it starts over again yeah. and comes back through. So there's an awful lot. I could spend hours talking about how in-depth it is. I've, I've started a class that I teach. It's 12 hours to go through everything. Oh, my goodness. So, all right. So I'm the youngest girl and I I have, there's an oldest boy. Right. And when you did my examination of my birth order, and I have it here, you, we, you, I mean, it's just amazing because it hit the nail right on the head about being the firstborn of the, all right. So my brother is a number one boy, the firstborn, firstborn of his father of a one B. And so when you give me like the personality, the characteristics, the focus, needs and needs from parents, parental relationships, ideally becomes X, uh, physical structure. I was like, oh my gosh, I was so blown away because everything that I had, that you had as a um, example or as a choice to be made on that position was correct. Like I, for instance, like his personality, he's a dreamer. I, a little bit, a lot of it, but he is. So his characteristics, you know, it's just, it was just really crazy. Like he's, he's stubborn, independent, sensitive, but yet uh, he's sensitive to criticism. Oh yeah. Without a doubt. Like I have to be pussyfoot around him and how I talk to him. Right. If I need him to, you know, do something or be the way needs things need to get done. I have to be very choosy on how I present it. If I go in there with gangbusters, like the personality I am very right. strong, it doesn't go well, you know? So um, the, the clash, the clashes that his personality has with the mother and father, I mean, everything was just really, really true. It was, it was really amazing. Um, what, what else does a, like what, all right. So we had talked about it before I made the, the, um, example between the queen and I, Ah, how funny, right? I, I thought that was really kind of funny, but what examples like using them as an example, how does that work? Like use them as the example. 
So use the queen as the yeah, like and then the family and you know right, right. Let me. I'm gonna jump one second to give you one that I can clearly give you a contradiction on. Okay. So you can see what it means to be in the same position. Okay. This is a great one. I love this one. So okay. a, a three boy. So there's a lot that goes into determining what your birth order is off of your father and if there's blended families and everything else. But just for simplicity's sake, we're going to say that there's one boy, two boy, three boy. So the third boy. The third boy is known for being a chameleon. They can change, adjust, fit into any situation. Oh, well. They're also that's who. <laughs> they're also known as being a mediator. They're most often they're some sort of a negotiator or a diplomat. They're very quick thinking. So it's all, they're like a chess master. They're pulling it in all together. They often are known to become diplomats or strategists or negotiators. So their biggest lesson for a three boy in life is to learn to use their mind with the right intent. Otherwise, it's a very easy for them to get out of balance. And when they get out of balance, we see unethical things. Oh, wow. Really? So I'm going to tell you about two, three boys. Okay. One of them in balance. Desmond Tutu. Oh. A priest. If you don't know him, he was in South Africa. He was an anti-apartheid yes. um, activist, a human rights activist, a negotiator. He sat on both sides of the table, a chameleon, bringing everybody together, connecting everybody, a quick thinker, able to strategize through everything. Now we have a three boy who's out of balance. Still a strategist, still a negotiator, but when they're out of balance, they become manipulative, secretive, they become loners, and they tend to lean towards that unethical side. So an example of that in our current news is Vladimir Putin. Oh, really? So you can see- There's little now, Vladimir's, or he, has, he has brothers? Vladimir has, yeah. That's pretty scary. Vladimir has older siblings, so he's oh. the three boy. Oh. So you now can see how significant that can be when we're out of balance. That's what it is we're looking for. So when you're talking about the queen, who I just love, oh. uh, and I know you have great respect for her, but that one girl position is very much the matriarch. She She's the problem solver. She's the one who who organizes everything like a mother would. So it might not be in as a mother, it could be in a business. So like you can see the queen, she managed her, her kingdom. So she did happen to also be a mother, but it's how she problem solves, how she does everything when she puts it all together. They tend to um, take over the motherly role so when they're younger yeah if, if they don't know to stay kind of in their place by mm -hmm. their parents they'll just take over and become the mother we i'll say that because i'm also a one girl are very strong-willed yeah we're often told that we're older than our age so that's also another big thing. We, it's really important for a one girl to learn how to play because we will work ourselves to death. Oh my goodness. Well, look at us here Saturday yep. afternoon on a beautiful yep. sunny day. That's right. <laughs> and you know, we do. I'm here. Yeah. I'm a workaholic. We're leaders. We're yep. teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all. Now, when we get a little out of balance, what's seen with us is that we tend to get really serious. Yes. So if we're trying to play to counter our overworking, we generally feel bad about playing and worrying about not working. Oh, so without a doubt. 
common, common for burnout. Now, are, you're like that too, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because then I feel bad that I'm like, all right, I'm doing this and like, all right, let me go, you know, let me go. All right, let's go out now. And all right, I'm going to have fun now, but yet my brain is still like at work going, oh my gosh, I have to do this, 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 this. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That's it's amazing. A, it's super common to be, uh, to have burnout in the one girl position. Uh, oh, really? So, all right. So back to the three boys. So so for instance, of so Vladimir Putin, so it's, he's the third child. He's just the youngest. He's the third child. He has three siblings. Now I can't, uh, off the I don't know if it's other. I, I can't recall if he has younger yeah. ones or not. Yeah. But above him, he has at least two brothers. So depending when you start it, and we'll use your um, situation. So your brother's the oldest. Yes. So it starts with a boy. So with him, there's no indication of an oldest sister. The oldest child is a boy for Vladimir Putin. His oldest sibling is a boy. Otherwise, we would see a girl notation in there. Like yours is a two boy because you're the second oldest. And the oldest is a boy and you're a girl. So you're a two boy, second born, two, oldest is a boy, and one, you're the first girl. That, um, my numbers didn't make sense, <laughs> my hand. But, uh, but that's how, that's one step in trying to start to narrow it down. Then you look at whether or not the fathers had children elsewhere because it might not just be in your family unit. It might be that if someone's had um, a, a passing of a child before they're born, that can impact. Oh, okay. Can... Well, now, so let's go back to, I mean, because I only have my example. So I know that I was a, um, I know that my mom had aborted a child, right? So we took that into consideration when, when um, we did this examination on mine. And so I would, and I don't know, psychically, I think I know what it was, but um, I don't know for sure if it was a boy or a girl, but it's still, I was still, could have been a middle child. So does that just erase the number? And then I just became the first girl and the only girl. It, it this is how it works. If I run your first, what we used was the determination of the approximate age when she did, when she had her procedure. So that was early enough that it didn't impact birth order. It's okay. generally not until later. In oh, okay. Right. So that's one thing. The other thing is, and I just had a really interesting reading with someone where I wrote down that they were a one girl because that's what they told me. And I know them enough to know that they are just not a one girl. So I wrote back and I said, are you sure that your father didn't have other children? She said, oh yeah, I'm really sure of that, but my mom had a near-death experience and she lost a child. I said, okay. She said, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. I said, okay, so that means that she could either be raised as a two girl or, I mean, be born as a two girl or a two boy, one girl because it would have depended on the sex of the child that was lost. And I ran the information on a two girl and I said, there's no, I mean, there is no doubt about it. The child she lost was a girl. Wow. So it's funny you should say that. So I know, like I know that I am that soul that came back because I know I have a job to do. I know I had to be here. I know I was appointed into this role of being in that family because, you know, I ended up, for those of you out there, I ended up becoming the head of my family. As my parents got older, I was the one who became the caretaker, the leader, 
taking care of everything, making sure everything was arranged. I mean, I took the over mother. everything. I took over everything. And so, but I know because of the situations that happened in my family that I was meant to come back again. I was, even if she had had abortion and whatever that was about. I was meant to come back and finish this task. So um, I, I strongly feel that. And I feel like that's why my examination was so spot on, even though, you know, there might've been another child. God help my mother. If she had had two girls like me, God help her. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like, I mean, when I think back, I really deserved some of the things. Uh, I'm, so, I'm so bad, <laughs> but I, I made up for it in the end. <laughs> a one girl can be hard, especially for a mother. They can be very hard. I, I mean, I know I, I could say the same for my mom. It, it would have been tough. Can you imagine you and I growing up in the same house? Oh, my gosh. I, I mean, know. just think think about that. The two strong personalities like Well, that. excuse me. Hello. We could have been twins because we're born like a day apart. Yes. yes. So. Happy very much day. so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very much so. But I am so interested in all the characteristics and um, this like, all right. So just the characteristics of what the order shows, like, for instance, one kid would be, you know, not great at sports, but the other kid could be an Olympian. Exactly. Um, more competitive or the two boy is known for being like the bull in the china shop and just you know full-on athletic competitive driven and and then you might get the three boy who's the mental the thinker okay right and then what about like say like um um oh my gosh do you think I can even think of their name right now? The two sons that are the famous football players. Hello. The Peyton Manning. The Peyton and Manning. Yeah, yeah. Peyton Manning. Yeah. Peyton is a two boy. So he is the bull in the china shop. He's the athlete. Okay. So. And there's actually three of them though. There's three boys and only Peyton. two of them were really famous. And then the other son was. I think he's Peyton the oldest and one. Archie, and I can't remember the other one. And I'd have to look at their whole sibling structure. I just happened to know yeah. that Peyton is a two boy, which is not surprising. The bull yeah. in the china shop, the competition, the very driven, very just, just get the ball down the field. In your position, this is a good way to compare that. A one girl feeds, a two boy forces you to eat. That's... <laughs> you know, that dynamic. So when you're a two boy, one girl, you're cooking the food and forcing them to eat. Oh, right. It's the competitive. You have yeah. that competitive edge to right. you, right? right? So, so that's really what makes you successful at your prior business, at your current business in, you know, in your life, because you have that competitive edge of that two boy that comes in. You're like a Peyton Manning mom. <laughs> I'm, uh, I don't know. I, I, there's times, I mean, I have sometimes so many balls up in the air that I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I manage it all, but you know what? I have no regrets. I love, I love it. It keeps me busy. Keeps yeah. me on the straight and narrow. Yes. <laughs> but, um, so, all right. Some girls. All right. So uh, let's talk about mothers. I know for me, my mother was, I mean, God rest her soul, lover, cute as a button, but drove me absolutely batty. <laughs> cute as a button, <laughs> but really. So, and we butt heads, oh my God, every day of our life. We really did. I mean, I did take care of her. I was, you know, I did take over in the end and, you know, it was much better in the end, but she did always like, she always was very difficult. And so talk about mothers, like why would that have been in this, in relationship to birth orders? So each position, 
six of the girls and six of the boys, there's also comes with it what they need from their parents and how to best get to their adulthood and how to best survive their childhood. And so a part of what you're having that with is because I'm not sure what your mom's birth position would be, but your birth position as a one girl will, we want to take over the mother position. We feel we can do it better. So we're, our striving as a one girl is to be, and I'll say this because it's the truth, a queen, <laughs> not, not a princess, a queen. When dad comes in as a one girl, we want dad to come in and say, princess, only really we want queen, and for us to get all the attention first. So if the dad does that, then it encourages, it lifts us, right? It elevates us. Aha, I am the queen. So funny. That's such an analogy because we're talking queen in my, yes, yes. my mother was the queen right voila yes she was the queen yeah she was treated like the queen he treated her like the queen he adored her he adorned her with jewelry i mean he he gave her the best life yes yeah barry, barry. so he was able to help to balance that the other thing that's kind of funny about the one girl position is uh -huh. we're the only position that will look at dad when he's headed out the door for work and say not that tie. Yeah. <laughs> so we tend to want to direct our dads. So That's there's so an interesting dynamic. But back particularly to the struggle with your mom, you know, different positions, they are more reliant on the relationship with the father or the mother, and they tend to have more conflict with one or the other. Now, the further you get in, so the more kids you have, and the further down you get, the less of an impact a parent has, which is some just by nature, you know? You know how it is, first child people are, you know, pictures of everything. Oh, yeah. There's everything, everything, right? Don't let them sit on the ground, don't let them cry, you know? By the third kid, they're like, oh, they'll get over it. Let them give them the hose, let them that's dig like, in the dirt. That's like the commercial. I forget what commercial it is. Yeah, they did the same thing. They like there's everything was so perfect with the kid. By the time that the, the third kid came along, everybody was in the shower. They dropped the kid. They yeah. put him in the shower. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like a simple bath. You know, right. Yeah. So yeah. that's a lot. You know, the impact that the parents have. It's not to say that the kids don't need guidance. It's just to say that the further down the birth order that they get, the less the impact is. Wow. Very cool. Um, tell me more about um, twins. Like, how does it work with a twin? Ah, isn't that an interesting one? Yeah. It's amazing what one minute can matter. Oh, really? A twin is not the same. If it's, let's just say, for simplicity's sake, that you yeah. have two boys. Okay. They are not both, and they're your only children. They are not both one boys. The oldest one is one boy. Okay. And I will say that I have just done a huge, I work with coaches and teachers and um, parents and siblings. I work with siblings a lot when they're in grief mode mm -hmm. and, and the family's starting to battle. And I Oh, just, really? I, yeah, very common. Wow. I can't communicate with my siblings. We can't get things focused. We're just trying to get through wow. resolution with a will or whatever the estate. So oh, I, just, I never would have thought of that, Karen. That's amazing because I thought it was just like someone who was just kind of curious of the birth order and the, and the behavioral patterns. I never thought about trying to gather everybody together so they can resolve an issue. That's amazing. Very interesting. That one is very common. Um, I sometimes get parents who are raising children. It's really, it's the book that was never written on how to raise a child. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, I'm also do a lot of work for coaching people, pe- coaches. So okay. if they're if they come in and they're like, "Okay, Don, I really want you to I think you need to consider being in the forest more." Right? Or or whatever, you know, like they're seeing you, they're trying to direct you someplace. It, understanding their client's birth order and what their strengths are and how it is they express and whether or not they're out of balance is really key for coaches. Wow. But, but back to where you're going with the twins, I just did a great big, I think there were 17 total in the family. So I did siblings, I did um, the both of the parents' family trees, and then I also did another section of the family. In there, there were four sets of twins. Wow. So for me, all I'm getting, I don't know them personally, all I'm getting is the order that their children were born. When I go through and put that together and I'm talking to them, they're like, oi, that's exactly what the problem is. <laughs> I completely see it. So once they start to learn, like this person expresses inward, they're creative. So a dad is like, just tell me what it is you want and just can't you just, you know, be more literal or whatever. And the son is like, like I could draw you a picture of kind of what it is I'm thinking, but you know, it's okay because I've got it all in here. Oh. So wow. learning, learning that and then being able to work those dynamics when you've got twins and you say the word identical, so we tend to think they're identical, not just in their looks, but also in their personality and everything. It's like they were, it's like they came from two different families. They just happen to look the same. And people expect them to be the same. We people expect, expect them to have the same tastes, the same yes. wants, the same, yeah, everything. And yes. you know what? That's a real big lesson because that's not the case. I mean, I could imagine that, you know, some of those twins actually who are forced from parents to like think the same and do everything the same, that it's a very um, hard thing for them to do. It is very hard. And there are like the two girl position. Yeah, the, that's got to be. The biggest issue for her is being compared to the one girl. Yeah. Now, what about if you had a set of twins, girls, girl twins, Mm -hmm. and then you have that one other kid, whether it be older or younger, I feel like that has got to be that one girl has got to be felt like such a loner. She's got to be, she's got to feel lost because these two have a connection, but this one feels lost. So I think that they, it's very possible and depending on, you know, how, how it falls. Their external space was. Yeah. But the other thing to remember, just like we were just talking about is that these two, they are connected. I mean, let's face it. Twins are connected differently yeah. than, than regular siblings or whatever, non-twin siblings. Uh, but there's also a significant difference between them. Yeah. So the twins tend, at certain positions, they tend to associate better with other positions. A one girl and a three girl tend to draw into each other. A one girl and a two girl, no. So if that's three girls, that older or younger, not twin, is gonna be drawn into one of those twins and they're gonna form a very close bond. Interesting. So with any family birth order, does health play a part in this and their health, anything with health play a part? There are tendencies to see things. um, Let me think the best way. You're never going to say, oh, uh, oh, a one girl is prone to having some illness. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. No, that's not in there. But you can see by the different positions that are high in stress. Okay. Or are more physical by nature or are, by those things, you can tend to see what they're going to run into as they're going through life. Interesting. So and it, does that fall the same way for successes or education? 
like successes in life if they're in a certain position or education? So as education, do you mean like if, what are like the it, odds that they would go to college? Yeah. Like, so um, like the types of education that they would go to, if it would yep. be more like a high or um, different occup uh, different um, educational, like if one's going to be a lawyer and the other one wants to be a nurse and, you know, there's definitely indication of where the bulk, if we put them all out, where the bulk of them go in like into, I was just doing the three boy, the strategist, the negotiator. So they're very often attorneys. Okay. Right. Um, and then when we think about things like, it's also thinking outside of the box. When we hit a one girl that's a teacher, it doesn't mean necessarily in traditional in school, a teacher, right? right? So um, we tend to see that the bulk of people will move close to or directly into that space of what they're most naturally prone to based on their birth order. It's, um, yeah, it, it's not an indicator of what school. Yeah, they, but you know but, what I meant. Like definitely they, you can see educational paths yeah. oftentimes. Right, right. Very interesting. Oh my goodness. Um, so interesting. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you wanted to add? Well, first, I want to thank you very much for having me on here. I love you dearly. You know I that. love you too. I think you're one of the best. Um, I know why I uh, I know why I met you. So too, the universe put you. us together for a reason. So yes, so fabulous. blessed. And I was thinking while we were talking that I would just love to offer your listeners a discount if that would be okay. Yeah, awesome. Go I'm, for it. I'm thinking we could do a 22% discount just because that's a great number. And it needs to be booked before 11-11. Oh, so my goodness. Okay. Before November 11th. And they can go to KarenRomine.com. So it's K-A-R-E-N-R-O-M-I-N-E.com. And, and I'll can... try to do um, a link. Okay. So, yeah. And they can just book a birth order reading. And when they go into the coupon part to apply the coupon, when they go to do the pricing, let's use our coupon code of Dawn Ritchie. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter whether you use lower or uppercase, yes. just Dawn Ritchie, D A W N R I C C I. Yes, that's me. Oh my gosh, honey, thank you so much. Oh, and thank you. I really, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time out on a Saturday afternoon. Thank you for having me. All right. See ya. Thanks for joining us. And I'm just going to give you a little bit of information to check out my website, dawnritchie.com. And also go and check out beachbenchmedium.com. That's uh, where I sit at a bench and give a reading um, by the seashore in New Jersey. So check that out. So thank you for sharing, uh, joining me today. And as for my gratitude, I'm going to give $25 off a reading if you use the code QUEEN. So go book a reading at my site and I will see you soon.